Hey guys, uh, welcome to this week's tutorial on ProRPA.com, your one-stop shop to learn RPA for free. So today we'll be talking about loops. I would say loops is one of the most crucial stages or the concepts that are um, required, whether say in Blue Prism, any RPA tool, UiPath or Automation Anywhere, or let me say any programming language whatsoever, right? Even in Java and C++, if you have that programming background, I'm sure I don't have to sell more on uh, loops because uh, you can you can very well imagine, right? There, the, the main concept, the main uh, intent for having a software program or for an RPA bot to work for us is because we don't want to do this stuff manually. Right when computers were there, uh, like came up or were uh, coming up, then um, the main intent was that we didn't want to have all the paper files for the record keeping and stuff. We wanted everything to be digitized. Right, same is the case with the RPA. Right, you don't want to do the manual stuff again and again. You want to repetitively perform probably the same steps a number of times um, automatically. Right, that is the intent, and that is something which will be covered in loops. So um, we have a separate stage called loops in our process flow diagram. We have been using trial one in all our blog posts. I'm sure you've seen it. So um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the looping condition here itself. Oh, the you see. Um, I already mentioned it in the blog post itself that uh, loop is one of the very few uh, stages which is accompanied as a set of uh, two stages, the loop start and the loop end, right? And uh, in this particular uh, use case that we will be showcasing here, we are going to use the same uh, the collection that we used in our last blog post, which is going to be the personal information. And in here we had the fields which we created last time, but uh, I added a few more initial values, which are the values which we have provided by default to the collection itself, right? And uh, it includes the name, the food preference of each of these persons, the, their weight, their marks, and the date of birth, right? And um, we have about six records in here, but there could be like thousands. So you always have to keep that in mind that you know the benefit analysis. If we have like huge amount of data, then all this this automation process becomes way too beneficial for us. Okay, so back in here we have the start stage, we have the loop start stage. And loop start stage, I already mentioned in the blog article that it, it's marking the beginning of the of the loop that we're gonna work on. So we're gonna open the loop stage. And uh, uh, let's make it as personal info, or I'll probably make it as wait add loop start one. And uh, in here, um, uh, we have the collection uh, field, and in there, we have all the collections which are currently accessible by this particular loop stage. In this case, it is personal info. That's the only collection we have. So we're going to choose that. And I'll tell you why I uh, put that name. So what we're going to do is, we're going to come up with a very funny situation now. We're going to imagine that this data is old and that everybody has been eating too much. We're making some weird assumptions here. But everybody got their weight increased by 20 pounds. Right? So that's what the... RPA bot needs to do. It needs to uh, add the value of uh, weight of each of these persons by 20 pounds. That's what we're going to do. So um, this, uh, this name, we put it as weight add because again, that would make much more sense. That's what we're trying to implement. So we added the word weight add. And secondly, it's always, always a uh, good practice to, you see, it all also changes to start one, you have to make it to end one, right? Or probably just keep it end, and let's not put start one, just put it start. I'll tell you why it will start one. Because um, if you add more loops, and two stages cannot have exactly the same name, so 
what it's going to do is it's going to automatically add the number like in here one because we took the one out if you add one more then it's going to be two so on right and it's another uh, good way a, a default very good programming from blue prism developers who actually didn't want to create any confusion in case uh, the user intends to use multiple loops within the program within the you know the process flow diagram so you understand the concept of nested loops there may be one loop inside another loop and probably down the drill there could be way more so you want you don't want to get confused you don't want the user to get confused when in case let's say the process automation is done and they intend to debug it so they add the number one two and three and so on and um, each of these like if we have the same naming convention then it would automatically oh this got changed again so what you wouldn't want is that uh, uh, like this would mark the start of the wait add loop and this is the this is marking the end of the wait end loop right wait add loop so you would want your naming to be as comprehensive as possible and that is pretty much the intent right and uh, if we can put any stages between this and uh, those will be executed by the number of times the collection is iterated so collection will be iterated uh, row wise that means uh, during the first iteration first row will be uh, executed or let's say traversed and during the second iteration second row would be traversed and so on so this loop is technically uh, in this case supposed to run six times because we have six rows in total makes sense right so uh, we have already added the personal information collection in here now what we want is we want to add 20 pounds to each and every person's weight so we're going to add a calculation stage we already discussed this right the calculation stage and uh, let's name it as add weight and how we access the data items within a collection is through the dot operator i did talk about the dot operator in the blog article so if you haven't checked it out please do so uh, you can find the link for it in the description of this video as well or you can simply log on to prorpa.com and uh, check out the blog over there and go for the blue prism blog of course so the best part is you don't have to put any operators you don't have to remember all this stuff that's the beauty again kudos to the blue prism developers all you gotta do is you can simply expand all those data items that you intend to see but we are dealing with numbers in this case because we're adding weight so all we gotta do is we gotta drag and drop it here so personal info dot weight this dot operator is actually so the first is gonna be the collection name the second uh, is gonna be the name of the field which is weight we could have used uh, marks also if you wanted to increment the marks of each and every person so on we could have done a lot of other stuff we could have added days to the particular date or depends and both the collection name and the uh, field name are separated by the dot operator that's how we access the data so we want to add 20 pounds so we simply add 20 and where do we want to store the result we want to store the result back into the weight uh, itself that weight field itself so we want to overwrite the weight field right rest of the information is gonna stay intact and uh, it's always good to validate the expression yes the expression is valid which means this is syntactically correct all we gotta do is simply hit ok and now we use the link stages okay after the weight is added it's gonna end the loop uh, and by ending the loop I mean for that particular iteration that iteration ends and um, it goes to the through the next iteration where the weight of the next person gets added by 20 pounds next next once all the people have got their weights added or the calculation or the operation on those each and every row has been executed the program will simply end right a simple program not too difficult and I hope it's making sense so we're gonna reset it we can change the execution speed if we want a little fast just so you know we don't get to so we're adding the weight for the first one two three four five six and all right now to check whether this actually worked fine or not 
you can see the initial values where the person's weight was 130, 179, 145 and so on and in here you can see it's 150, 199, 165 and so on right these are the current values this tab shows what has been done if you uh, reset it it will reset back to the default values and you can see that the current value tab is gonna be blank right so loops are gonna be highly highly useful because I can bet you I like many a times I've worked on the MS Excel uh, you know automations and and like Excel is something I'm very fond of because I think it's a great great application which is used whether in financial processes whether in data management processes I have used it tremendously and uh, through Blue Prism automation what we do is we extract the data from uh, you know uh, from the Excel sheet into a collection we do all the computations similar to this one like adding data or adding these numbers and stuff and then we rewrite it back in another Excel or on the same Excel depends right so you can imagine how easy it would be to uh, you know carry out such processes in in, in case uh, like using the loop statements if I had to write this state uh, this particular stage six times how inconvenient would it have been and uh, like for God's sake I mean if there were like 5,000 rows I I'm sure nobody would uh, want to do like reciprocate this 5,000 times so loops provide a very very uh, convenient way for us to to iterate and uh, perform computations repetitively for x number of times right x being the number of rows in this case right so uh, that is pretty much it for this week next week we'll talk a little bit about the controlling options the execution control and stuff and um, hopefully we'll uh, have a similar session in terms of you know the great learning experience that we're having okay guys please do uh, provide your comments your feedback your thoughts your likes and shares on Facebook we have the page called Pro RPA uh, on the blog post pro within ProRPA.com website itself please do subscribe to the YouTube channel as well to stay posted on all the updates that I you know put on which is usually Thursday evening as per the Pacific Standard Time and uh, for a thorough learning please do check out the CRISPR learning video and the book series available on Amazon and Udemy and Skillshare and uh, let me know if there's any concern I'll be more than happy to address it awesome thank you very much have a good one bye bye happy automating